Hella Black episode 73. I want to start this off by saying rest in peace to Sean Reed and Ahmaud Arbery. On this, we talk performative outrage, celebrity culture, and why that she needs to die. And we also talk about the importance of organizing and political education. Hope you all enjoy this. <laughs> Yeah. You gotta get us a studio, bro. That's what I'm saying. It's a long time coming. It's a long time coming in the video. I, somebody just be buying that motherfucker and be like, hey, man. Y'all niggas wanna scoot over or whatever. <sighs> Production in the pandemic. All money in. Production in the pandemic. These niggas have done a number on us, my nigga. Niggas figured this shit out, though. Did you want to have all these books right here? Bitch. <laughs> After the shot? I don't yeah, know. It's all good. We, we, we mob it. You know, niggas reading that books. Africa, nigga. He gonna let niggas know he reading. <laughs> <laughs> I read. Revolutionary suicide, nigga. I read. I read. We reading. <laughs> niggas be reading, man. Have a black... Feel me? Shout out to our YouTube nigga. If you're watching, thank you for watching. You feel me? We've been taking some time to set this shit up. So we come in with a vengeance though. I feel like I feel like each time we make the conscious decision to like do things better, like we did with you know, as a result of the fellowship of Patreon, like all right, we're gonna start dropping this, da da da. We're gonna revamp our tears, da da da. Anytime we make the decision and put some clear intention and effort behind it, I feel like the the shit quality works. steps up. Yeah. So, you know, if you got any um, if you got any feedback for how the videos can be better um, as we start to to drop them and release them, we open to it. And, you know, I think around, you know, later on, it's going to be really, really good. I think the video quality is going to be top tier. The production is going to be top tier. But, you know, niggas is trying, as always. Niggas is trying. Niggas is making it happy. You feel me? Hell black. Just subscribe to our fucking YouTube channel. I don't even know the link, but search Hello Black Podcast on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> YouTube don't be giving the links like SoundCloud, I don't think. You know, yeah. like SoundCloud.com, Hello Black Pod, you yeah. feel me? Ooh. Apple Podcast, fuck with us on there. Spotify, you feel me? Patreon.com slash Hello Black Pod. Hello Black Pod.com, tap in. Fuck with us, you feel me? Episode 73. 73. Yes. <laughs> yes. Y'all see how we didn't have to check our notes that time? We came fucking prepared. I told the niggas we was going to do better. I got my black joy ready. It's on. Yeah, I right, thought about I'm my black joy this morning. Oh, we taking you know, this shit to the next level. Making my smoothie. I'm like, all right, what, what black joy do I have? So I don't just see like, hey, yeah, you go first, bro. <laughs> it took us long enough. I like it. It took 73 us 73 episodes. You feel me? We here. 73 episodes over the course of three years to finally say we gonna come prepared. <laughs> but that's what happens again, nigga. When you producing, you know, editing, recording, writing, all the content, setting up the space. Come on, bro. Everything. You feel me? But. Shit, we making this shit rock. Shout out to all the supporters too, all the patrons. You the feel patrons, me? bro. Y'all I'm trying to like shout out. I mean, I feel like we would have more patrons if people could afford to, you know, subscribe. But or if just you know non-black people and white people just paid up for content, bro. Five dollars. I'm also bro. like, ain't that the smallest? Ain't that the lowest tier? Yeah, five. Like I five dollars for three episodes, bro. You feel me? Like you can make that sacrifice, bro. For five dollars, like especially if you're non-black and you're learning. If you anyone and learning. You feel me? But it's like, I don't know. It's weird. I, I just know niggas can support because I look at these podcasts like, you know, Chapo Trap House and some of these other, you know, so-called leftist podcasts that yeah. is ran by the the white left, nigga. And their Patreons be going up. Like, so if they be having thousands of supporters. And, and I'm shit. sure they, they demographic is, feel me, hella diverse. Hella diverse. You feel me? So it ain't just the white folks that's breaking them off. It's probably, you feel me, the non-white folks that's breaking them off, too. If yeah. you white and you listen to hella black, bro, if you, yeah. I hope ain't no white person consuming this shit for free. Period. Point blank. <laughs> we will find like, you. If you listen to this shit for free, we will find you. I will find you. Bro, like, <laughs> how do you call yourself an ally? How do you call yourself... Yeah, how do you call yourself an ally to black radicals? And you're still consuming black labor for free. Black political education for free. Come on, my nigga. But you paying the New York Times subscription. <laughs> you playing, you paying the Washington Post subscription. So pay the fuck up, patreon.com slash pod. We got great content up there too, extended content, you feel me? So you you's actually getting some money, 
you or the worth is worth your money. You feel me? Yeah, you're getting you're a product. Just, you're not just donating, nigga. You even though it shouldn't take that, content. you should just be breaking <laughs> niggas off for the sake of breaking niggas off. Period. But you know, if we're gonna dive into that, you know, to 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 further motivate you, you should be supporting niggas because we're giving y'all this labor and this content. Facts. But if your politic is one that you know you identify as the left, you know, a socialist, a, a democratic socialist, a, you know, a, a Bernieite, whatever you is, bro. Pay up, support, support <laughs> radical up, black content creators, nigga. And we actually doing the work too. You feel me? Like you gonna donate to a presidential presidential campaign, but you won't donate to fucking the podcast, nigga. Tap yeah. in to Patreon. organizers, Hell Black Pod, People's Breakfast, Oakland. Fuck with us, man. So I'm excited for today, bro. One because I'm very angry and I feel like I gotta, I have an outlet for my anger today. I take my anger. That's, out. that's bro. That's how I was feeling earlier, bro. I was just sitting in here, bro, just hella angry. You feel me? And it's like a cycle, bro, because it's like. <laughs> Niggas have been doing this work for a minute, you feel me? And this isn't the first video that we've seen, you know what I'm saying? And then we, this isn't the first time we've seen, you know, celebrities kind of try to co-op shit and speak about shit, you know what I'm saying? But it's like, bro, it's shit's still so infuriating. So, like it's, you were saying, I'm glad we have the fucking podcast to be able to, like, really sit down and fucking talk about it. And have the space. I feel like even in it, for a lot of people, like, they don't even have a, a space to fucking, pro- like, we about to process, you feel me, in yeah. real time. A lot of folks don't even have the space, the community, the people. To, to, to process their emotions Because I feel like Everything that folks Are feeling right now um, In in regards to uh, Sean Reed And Ahmad Arbery being You know Murdered by some Barbaric crackers yeah. I feel like Any emotions that come with that Are for sure justified And You know I'm just grateful To have the words And have the space To be able to process my shit um, But definitely Want to start off with saying Like R.I.P. to them and you know niggas Definitely. is gonna put in Send the work. Love to their family. Yeah, a thousand percent. Um, and niggas gonna put in the work, the necessary work to make sure to honor you know, their lives, bro. Bro, like like them and the and the, and the many others, the millions of others of Africans that we lost. Right, make sure niggas' deaths ain't going in vain. I'm glad you brought that up, bro, because I feel like the biggest way to honor somebody, you feel me, is to put the work in. You feel me to address the system and to overthrow the system that took their lives. You feel me? Like that's how you honor people. You feel me? It ain't just an Instagram post It ain't just outrage When it happens And then you just go back To regular life Three days later And it's hard You feel me I, I, I know it's hard Cause you know in, in the midst of Like think about what, Like not just dealing With the pandemic right But as again You know This isn't the first time um, a, a black per, Black folks have lost Their lives To to barbaric And racist White folks right um, Terrorists bro yeah. Shit straight terrorism nigga But you think about in the process, in the midst of us, like, trying to fucking process our emotions and grieve, nigga, because that's what a lot of niggas is doing, right? In the midst of that, you still got to go out here and try to survive, you feel me? So, I, I get why. And when it becomes kind of the norm, you know, not to yeah. not to justify it, but it can be hard to, like, fucking even figure out what the work look like or even engage yeah. in the work, you know what I'm saying? So sometimes you have to disengage from it. You feel to me? survive, my nigga. I mean, that nigga, uh, <laughs> Deshaun was talking about that, like... I haven't been able to engage with this because it's going to trigger my PTSD to a certain level. And I, I had, I mean? and, I, I, and I, f- I feel that I feel them on that a thousand percent. I mean, in some ways, you know, I had some people texting me about this shit. I'm just like, yeah, like I, I don't, you know, like I, it didn't hit me yet. But this morning and the last night, it hit me a little bit more because yeah. I was able to, I guess, avoid it in some ways because I, I try to craft my timeline like I have certain words muted and shit, mm-hmm. so I just don't always see all the traumatic shit that pops up on Twitter, you know, but. And I wasn't on Twitter like that yesterday either. So I had saw the headline and I went and I like Google so I could find the article just to get a little bit more details. And then I like felt that shit stirring up in me. I'm like, all right, I just I I gotta detach from that shit. Um, and even that's a whole another a whole another layer, right? Again, this shit is just so layered because you're trying to do what's best for you and also honor your people. You know what I'm saying? Like Thanks. honor their lives. Like I'm talking about honoring like. Black folks in general, right? Not just the ones that were slain, and like trying to build that community in, in it and be there for the different folks that that need you to be there for them, who who have been hurt by these tragedies. Um, but yeah, it's 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 always reminding me what we up against. Like Thanks. we dealing with trauma, we dealing with shit in real time, and then we trying to prepare ourselves for the future to continue to fight against this white supremacist nation. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, it's like niggas is trying to fight COVID nineteen, and niggas is catching bullets at the same fucking time. Niggas is losing like, their jobs. Violence <laughs> literally comes from all different forms, whether it's healthcare and not being able to get to a hospital, or it's being you know you trying to 
you know, have some joy, you feel me? And, and like you help your on the mental streets. health, bro. And you <laughs> going for a jog, nigga, and you was executed, assassinated, and murdered by white supremacists. You know what's you know wild? What me and you have been running hella much lately, too. Like, that's what I'm thinking. I'm like, anybody that, like, follows me on social media, mostly Instagram, like, I've been, like, posting my different daily runs, like, you know what I'm saying? I'm just like, nigga, yesterday morning I started my day off with a, with a, with a two mile run, yeah. and I wasn't in my neighborhood. You feel me? I was I was somewhere else, and I'm what what could that have led? You feel me? Like just having to think about that kind of shit, man. It's just, bro, it's it's so tiring. I'm so exhausted, my nigga. Like that's the most like that's all the emotions I feel. I'm angry. Yeah. I'm sad. I'm tired. I'm confused. It's just like, <laughs> it's, it's that rage, bro. Because it's also like. I think, at least in my mind, I'm like, bro, like, we in a pandemic, bro, like, you know what I mean? Like, I guess, maybe that's my own ignorance and shit. I'm not I'm not ignorant, but just, like, I guess, false delusion hope. <laughs> We're like, all right, we in a pandemic, like, all right, maybe shit won't be as sick. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But this violence from the police is still the fucking same. I mean, if We've seen it, the same shit yeah. in San Leandro when, you know, black man was killed, shot in his back in San Leandro and I'm, Walmart, bro. And it's like... History has shown us that... Um, White supremacy will really just go up above and beyond in any type of fucking moment. Yeah, it don't matter what the conditions of the world are, <laughs> my nigga. You know, colonial matter. violence is still you know what I'm saying. Like you think violence. about the white militias that were surfacing during Katrina. You know what I'm saying, like that shit. Pandemics and disasters bring out white supremacy in its fullest force, bro. In its fullest force. Yeah. Whether it's the police or these, you know, white supremacist terrorist vigilantes, former police officers. Right, but yeah, bro, it's starting to feel. I remember it's just like it's as the weather is getting hotter, like it's just more fucking death. I feel like you know, it just remind me of like that summer in 2014 when Michael Brown was killed. You know, like August, and then you just had so many more. And then that next summer in 2015, like that was a summer where hella, hella folks was killed by OPD. You know, and it's like it just feels it's feeling very similar. This type of feeling. Unfortunately, it's you just know. it's history repeating itself. But you know we're gonna dive deeper into this, of course, in the in the, in the conversation. But I think it's good that we do start <laughs> with some black joy. Yeah, you know, before we dive into a, a topic that is heavy, tough, shit, make niggas angry, bro. You know, but I don't know. You want to dive into black joy? Yeah, I was reading a tweet by Aunt. Earlier today And they were saying that um, And I think Miriam might have said it on the episode That they were on with us too About you know Because I think During this kind of shit um, During moments like this of tragedy yeah. It's it's easy to erase the work that folks are doing Because you get so caught up in like what needs to be done Or folks are like just now being aware like in in their rage they're seeing things like what's going on with the fuck things have to change and change and it's like yo there are folks who are day in and day out on the grounds trying to change this shit in their houses trying to change the the material conditions of black folks and try to and try to combat white supremacy right um so something and Ant was saying like remembering that you know like that kind of statement by Miriam um brings them a little bit of joy because I, I be needing that shit during times like this like the shit is just so overwhelming and it's easy to get caught up again and like all the shit that's going wrong. But I'm looking at, you know, what we've been doing with PBO and, you know, the breakfast program, the community learning programs, the different political edu- education yeah. um, stuff that we're that we're diving into garden. as a core team, the garden. Right. So it's like, nigga, there's work being done to constantly get to to, co- to consistently combat this white supremacist capitalist patriarchal state that is the United States of America. Right. Like. The work is being done. I think it's easy to forget that when we getting pumped, when it's like shit, when it's, when it's looking like progress not being made, we still got, you know, unarmed uh, black men being shot down in broad daylight. Uh, so I guess the cause of the joy was, you know, I was no, in the midst of some work. grieving, you know what I'm saying? But just being reminded um, by Ant through the words of Marion Kaba that there's work being done. You know what I'm saying and niggas like us is a part of that work. Yeah. For me, like there is work being done to ensure the survival mm-hmm. and the uh preservation of of uh black folks. Yeah. And I think that's just important to recognize that especially cuz it's so easy to get like pessimistic around the shit. 
But it's like, bro, it's like we recording this podcast right now and a couple hours after this shit, we finna be in the field serving our community. You know what I'm saying? And, and doing that, that political work. So I think, yeah, that shit is important that niggas is getting more organized. You feel me? Because it's like we have all this anger, all this rage, the sadness, which is important. And it's important to feel all that shit. But how do we direct it? You know what I'm saying? That's why I'm thankful, you know, for organizing in a lot of ways because I'm able to channel my anger, my rage, you know, channel my love that I have for my community into these organizing efforts. You feel me? To where we're able to build, you know, solidarity in our community to really challenge and address, you know, this white supremacist imperial state known as fucking America. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I think for me, Black Joy was just when we was barbecuing, chilling, drinking, Eating good food, bro. Just being able to sit back and relax. You feel me? And just even in the middle of the pandemic, enjoy. You feel me? Enjoy like ourselves, bro. And just enjoy ourselves and have a good time. You know, I think that's just important. Yeah, we we were kind of talking about it before we started recording, but just like those moments to where you kind of get to step out of side of reality for a little bit because this shit yeah. is so fucking heavy. You know what I'm saying well, you, you almost like, forget that all the other shit is going on in some ways, and you're able to just like. Even if just for a brief moment, you know, niggas just get to be, Even niggas just get not, to exist. <laughs> me not knowing the rules of Uno and telling you to draw four. <laughs> <laughs> just being able to exist, my niggas, I, I feel like something that sometimes we can take for granted. The ones, those of us that do have um, the opportunity to, to do so, right, to detach from our quote-unquote realities, um, I think that's something we got to hold on to and try to make time for as much as possible the moments yeah. where you could just step outside your mind and body and just be for a little bit put your phone down just chill grill listen to music you know be around be some around people that you people. care about people that care about you yeah so i hope y'all we didn't miss all this 2K shit though yeah we didn't because <laughs> i lost out. i lost too yeah shit. <laughs> this one got me <laughs> shit, shit happens but you know i'm on i'm on xbox <laughs> 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 Don't get me started on 2K, bro. <laughs> but yeah, y'all. Um, and amidst all this shit, I hope y'all are experiencing some joy. And if you haven't, you got to make that shit a priority. And I know it's cliche as hell. You know, find time for joy, find joy, make time for yourself. I know that should sound cliche. Self help, hella black. No. <laughs> I know, bro. I, I know it's mad cliche. And sometimes, you know, like, sometimes niggas don't want to hear them fucking positive messages. But I feel like we make so much space. And our and negative shit is forced on us so much that, you know, it's it's our fucking duty to make the space for joy, love, positivity, whatever words you want to use. Facts, thousand percent. Because this world is tough as it is. You feel me? So it's oh God. like, especially when we talking about doing movement work, like the shit we do day in and day out, bro. That shit is tough, bro. Like the shit we see. You feel me? Seeing our people in these conditions amidst the fucking global pandemic. You feel me? Like seeing the conditions get worse, bro. That shit. You got to find that time. You feel me? Yeah, just because it's the norm don't mean... Just because you normalized it for yourself and it's like, oh, I, this is what I do. This is my experience. Don't mean that shit's still not having its effects on you. Thousand percent. Period. No matter how normal this shit is to you. Facts. So, yeah, man. Y'all y'all go find some joy. <laughs> Episode 73, man. Have so, a black. Yeah, we, we talked about it a little bit earlier and I think we're going to assess all this shit from a few different angles. Um... But I think the the premise of it is just, you know, I, for me, what I was kind of angered by was the performative outrage by, you know, black wealthy, black celebrities, black athletes, black entertainers. And I'm going to call it performative just because if your actions aren't aligned with the things that you preach on one-off situations when it's a moment for it you performing my nigga like you're not actually living by the shit that you preach right so and if the outrage doesn't come with a politic either bro when you know that a lot of these niggas have the time to read a lot of these niggas have read right and they're very well well aware of the history yeah but to stop but but decide to still you feel me just put on you know and they might they might be angry you know, it's not that they're not angry. Yeah, you know I, I believe saying? the it's, anger is real, but like, I mean, yeah, I think the anger is very real. And what are what are y'all doing with the anger besides just bringing awareness to shit? And I, again, I think bringing awareness to things are great. 
but like oh that's the least a motherfucking can do like bringing if, awareness bro, if, you, like, if bro, you have 200 million dollars in your fucking bank account i expect a lot more than fucking bringing awareness bro period bro especially when you have the ability and the wealth and the capital behind to actually make material changes for the people you feel me for our people period you have we and i think it's on us like you know the masses to hold these motherfuckers to a higher standard because if we don't they're gonna like they y'all if, if it's one thing we know about people especially people who ain't going through shit and have no incentive to do better is that they're gonna keep doing the bare minimum if you allow it when you show that the bare minimum is getting them more and more money you feel me because that's what's happening is like it's like the outrage is a performance but that performance leads to a documentary and then that documentary leads to a book deal and a bag comes attached to it all Right, These niggas are raising that, that's capitalists. what it really is. Nothing bro. without money at the, at the forefront of their brains. I mean, you know, you had Beyonce at the Super Bowl dressed up as a Black Panther, but what has she actually done to material materially support Black communities, bro? Black grassroots organizations, Black radical organizations. What has she done for the Black Panthers who is still locked up behind fucking prison walls right now, bro? What did she have to say about the Black Panthers prior or after that performance? Nothing. <laughs> like, come on, my nigga. That's performing, bro. That's taking something and understanding. It's fucking cosplay, nigga. Come on. And we we see this at the celebrity level, but we see it. You feel me? At, at, at even like a, a quote unquote, you know, no normal person level. Like, all right, I'm gonna go to a protest, take a photo. You feel me? And put a hashtag, and that's it. Like, bro, our lives are not just hashtags, bro. You feel me? Like, <laughs> it's it's understanding. Like what accompanies, you know, aligning yourself with something, you know, aligning yourself with the Black Panthers that comes with a certain responsibility and not only responsibility that comes with a certain politic attached to it. My nigga, a certain way a of life, per- thousand percent, a way the Panthers of were Marxist Leninists, bro, revolutionaries, bro, talking about overthrowing the capitalist system. They didn't fuck with no type of capitalist, whether he was black or white, bro. Period. Niggas is more than Afros and fist. <laughs> That's what it's like. A lot of these folks, they love the cultural, you know, aesthetics of blackness, but they don't love blackness in its I'm revolutionary say, form. They don't love blackness as a person, bro. They love it as a culture, as an aesthetic. And it's like that aesthetic is what makes the money. And that's it's not even fair to say it's not even fair to call it a culture, right? Because the culture is all those things that you just named. It's not even Facts. the culture. You you had it with just the aesthetic. Like they like the what aesthetic it looks like. It. Right. You feel me? And the and the access that comes with it. But it's like you don't have black is beautiful without the Black Panther Party. <laughs> you feel me the whole you know be proud of your afro nigga that came from the black panther party nigga that came from the black women in the black panther party and this is like you you get people who who push the theory but live a life completely contradictory to the theory my nigga like, that's 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 what's getting me is like you can't embody the panthers when you want to whether that's in how you dress it or when you tweet something out or whatever and then live a life that's completely contradictory to the to the things that they push yeah. there would like the panthers would have never had a billionaire in their shit because you know <laughs> for them you know the 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 carters and the obamas it's like okay we have the afro we have the the aesthetic of blackness but behind closed doors these niggas are right wingers bro Period, move bro. like whites nigga jay-z has money invested in the prison industrial complex nigga obama dropping bo- drone strikes you feel me on african peoples bro you this is my me? thing. Not Obama calling niggas thugs after Freddie Gray, nigga. Oh, Michelle Obama just had a goddamn documentary just come out, bro. And she ain't sending no <laughs> words. You feel me about the niggas who was just got killed, bro? But she's talking about blaming black people for Trump, nigga. That's my trauma, and she's weaponizing the word trauma. Like, oh, I'm traumatized because niggas didn't vote for a fucking warmonger named Hillary Clinton. This is my thing, bro. <laughs> Fuck you. In addition to all the many <laughs> points you made, it's important that niggas recognize this because you got to recognize not only are these people not our fucking community, they are very much so our enemies, my nigga. Period. Facts, bro. They are our enemies. They're they- not on the side of the people, bro. Just because she makes a song, you feel me, and you like the music doesn't mean that she's your friend, bro. And they actively make the choice every day to align with the enemy, my nigga. He buddy buddy up with Kraft, you feel me? That's what it is, bro. The Obamas, the Carters, nigga. Oprah, the Tyler Perry's, nigga. Kanye West. What these niggas doing for the people, bro? Nothing, bro. All they do is give you an aesthetic of blackness, and niggas love it, bro. All Obama had to do was shoot some fucking hoops and fucking dap a nigga with a handshake. He all niggas stand, bro. Like, what happened to that whole initiative with Jay Z and NFL? Like niggas just forget about that. <laughs> what 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 community groups are they working with? 
Like, did we just forget was, about that? You know, working with some community groups that was actually cutting black niggas' dreads off. Yeah, I remember that. So those were the community That was one groups. of them. We don't know the other ones that they named. And I'm exactly. sure that was either the norm or it was probably worse. Yeah, definitely. This is the thing, but we allow people to say things and not and not live through the actions. The niggas be giving them a pass, bro. And then you wonder why we have the conditions that we live in, bro. Like, this shit, bro, and it's all connected. This is what I need people to see. Like, the same fucking quote-unquote, you know... Jay Z was supposed to be working to 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 um, combat police brutality with his with his we NFL had, shit, right? We just passed the kneel, nigga. What? But that was that was the whole initiative. Like we gonna be working with the police, right? That was what it, we were gonna be working with the police. We we're like, gonna be having conversations with the police, nigga. Who just fuck the who, police, nigga? Who just killed Sean Reed, my nigga? The police, nigga. You can't conversate with devils, nigga. How do you appeal to the conscience of somebody who has no morality, bro? You don't. Period. Yeah. Jay Z has 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 done little to nothing to combat police brutality. If anything, <laughs> he well, uh, he's done something. He's invested in ankle monitors. Yeah. <laughs> so if we can keep niggas in the house, so, so, they might not know, be able to be killed by the police. Well, so uh, he's invested in the system. So I mean, he's done a little something. But that's just a new form of car- incarceration. <laughs> you feel me? Guarantee you, he has money in private prisons. Guarantee you, he has money in, in the military industrial complex. You don't become a billionaire and not have your hands wet in this violence in this sea of capitalism, bro. Period. I just um, and it's it's this whole new black shit, bro. You feel me? It's that whole new black Pharrell type black shit. You feel me? Or that common type shit. It's like okay, you know, I'm past. You know, my skin isn't the reason why I'm oppressed. You know, I just gotta work hard type shit. That shit is so violent. <laughs> That shit is so violent and so misleading, Bruh. To in in a country in, in a country that was built on the exploitation and murder of of black and indigenous folks to completely erase that history and say that's not the reason why, nigga. What do you what? There are four hundred years Bruh. of history to say that is exactly this the reason why. Real, really said the new black dreams and realize that is not pigment pigmentation it's a mentality and it's either going to work for you or it's going to work against you and if you got to pick the side you're going to be on. This nigga said that shit in 2014, bro. Niggas, I, Michael Brown was executed. But this is a nigga who built this whole in brand. 2014. This is a nigga who built this whole brand by working with, you feel me, or posing with niggas that in, in Virginia Beach as dope dealers. Like, that was his whole, that's how he built his whole aesthetic off, off dope boy shit, off blackness. But now you saying, oh, we, we a new black. And then you have the, I'm um, happy, like what, nigga? You just happy all the time? Pharrell's a joke. Fuck that nigga. He's also the same nigga that works Khalees out of hella money. So, you know, can't trust niggas like that. I'm not surprised that he's saying shit like this. He's a He works Khalees out of money. He is a, a capitalist through and through. And capitalists have no morals. But like these, and but like you know, what's also. But these are the niggas who be you know who have these conversations on when this shit happens. Bro. These like common is always the voice of the plot. Like just because this nigga is like a poetic, whatever this nigga used to like slam poetry or some shit. This nigga is always pushed to the forefront of political discussion. The trees and the sun and the love and the black. I hate fake the- deep niggas. <laughs> I hate fake deep niggas. That nigga is about as deep as a puddle. <laughs> like he is about as deep as a puddle. Niggas mm. do not be as well read and as versed as they present to be. Bro, it's like, but it's always those niggas. He, like, but that's like, it's it's strategic. It is because it's propaganda. It's and we have to analyze. Me? You know, that should be our analysis, bro. Is that like what they're doing is propaganda to the masses of black people? It is. If you get right? a nigga like for real, who motherfuckers adore and revere, telling you like, yo, yo, blackness is not ever gonna hold you back, right? Or you, you have fail, common because of you. If you get shot by the police, it's because of you. You have common over <laughs> here saying, okay, we should you know extend our hand in love to white people and just forget about the past. As much as we can. Them niggas gonna ride in hell, and let's bro. move forward now, where we are now, and let's help each other. Nigga, what, Common, bro? You the same nigga that made a song about Asada, nigga? The fuck? Nigga, Asada this was a fucking a- revolutionary, bro, because they love the revolutionary shit, but when it comes time to have a revolutionary politic, bro, they don't hate it, because niggas love Asada, right? Bro, this and is niggas the gonna make money point. off Asada. This is the exact point. <laughs> niggas go on and lead completely contradictory lives to the theories and politics that they push. How do one minute you, you dedicating some shit to Asada, and the next minute... Come on, bro. You over here shaking hands with Obama, nigga, who wanted her extradited, nigga. Again, y'all, we got to judge people by what they do, not what they say, and not how they perform, bro. What do you do? Because sometimes even your performative action not even an action, my nigga. It's the very, like, and this is my 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 thought. This came to my brain yesterday when LeBron tweeted, tweeted an outrage about Ahmaud Arbery, which is like, 
I think LeBron's well, everything they said was very very real. But like LeBron, you didn't have any of these type of words when Cap was boycotting police when, when Cap was kneeling for police brutality. If you like, you had you had no backing for Cap, bro. Little I mean, to no backing. That nigga didn't even take a knee himself in the NBA. The niggas was walking around with the Air Gardner, I can't breathe shirts. All you did was bring awareness. That ain't stop motherfuckers from getting lynched by the police. Niggas in New York right now is still getting beat and harassed during COVID-19 while the fucking pigs out there hand out masks to white people, bro. So it's... You talking about like, okay, so what, what do we believe in as as folks who push the policy? We believe in action, right? And we, we and I think, you know, there there's there are people all around the world, bro. Who are letting their actions align with their politics? Who, when they when they don't believe it's something, they take action to to try to eradicate that problem. You know what I'm saying? And LeBron has the type of power to be like, my nigga, I'm not do the same thing Cap did. I'm a, I'm a, Cap was not even, Cap wasn't even. I'm not gonna play. Cap was like, I'm gonna take a knee. Not even I'm not gonna play. I'm still gonna play if I get the chance. But I'm gonna at least take a knee. LeBron could have been like, nigga, in solidarity with this nigga, I'm not at the very least even take a knee. Bro. But if he want to make some action, I'm not gonna play basketball, nigga. Until this nigga has a job, bro, and. It's not about just being in solidarity with Kaepernick. It's about being in solidarity with black people because Kaepernick's knee was much bigger than just fucking, you know, himself, bro. He was doing that to honor victims of this white supremacist violence. You feel me? So, like, them niggas couldn't even take a knee. Why can't LeBron just stop playing, stop playing basketball? He could if, if he, he wanted to. Like, why not? I mean, shit. It's looking like he won't get another championship. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm like, bro, like, we got to... I don't know if I don't know if that's extreme, but I'm thinking like, how could if you really wanted to make a, if you if you really wanted to prove a point to somebody, right? Boycott, nigga. The least you can do, and the boycott isn't even a radical action like that, bro. <laughs> I mean, take I don't I don't. You could do so much more besides just like tweet, talk, nigga. And I think LeBron does amazing work with which is like I promise school. Um, I think he helps parents get get um employed and shit like that. But like, nigga, this is a billionaire with the resources. Like, nigga, do like yeah. If you if you say you love and care for black people, you should be doing that. Stop fucking applauding people for doing things they're supposed to do. And in my opinion, if you ask me, I think that's doing the bare minimum of all the resources he has. Period. Point blank. And the thing is, bro, like, niggas gotta be willing to go the extra mile. Niggas gotta be willing to do the work. If you're gonna be invoking the names of Martin Luther King and MLK every fucking chance you get, and aligning yourself with as as a leader of black folks, as as a thought leader, as a spokesperson for black folks, nigga, do the necessary work. Put in the necessary time that's required to get us free. Exactly. Period, and that's what we said in the last episode, bro. It's like embody your politics. If you're going to claim and use the words and invoke the words of Malcolm X, realize that he said fucking you capitalists are bloodsuckers. Bloodsucking parasites, nigga. Realize that Dr. Martin Luther King was an anti-imperialist. and spoke out against these bombings in Vietnam and the war in Vietnam. I just hate how right, and that's just a basic like, bro. Just align yourself with that shit too. But actually, what is the action, bro? Because it's like that's that's the issue is that these niggas are not donating. You know, the school is great, right? But nigga, you can also donate to grassroots organizations actually fighting for the people and attempting to overthrow it, right? But these niggas don't want to do that for a reason. Because they they're gonna align with themselves. It's their class interest, bro. All they care about is their class interest, bro. Maintaining their class status, bro, because they have more in line. The problem is school with ain't the- hurting white supremacy, my nigga. Like, let's just call it what it is. Yeah. It's not he, if he was in there saying like, "Yo, this is a school that I built to co- to combat white supremacy." And we are training a new generation of organizers and revolutionaries that will embody the spirit of the Black Panther Party. And we are building out people's programs and revolutionary programs to address the material needs inside of our community. That would look different. But anybody can get behind the school. And we know we know we're helping some poor impoverished black kids. And we and we know we know <laughs> how, we know how education shit. has always been used as an integrative tool, my nigga. Like we know that we know this. It's a it's a straight streamline to integrate black folks into this white supremacist society. And if you know on the other end of that, you know, or to integrate them into the black bourgeois class, like <laughs> it's like what niggas is doing. Niggas ain't really doing it with the intent to to liberate black folks to overthrow um, you know this imperial machine, nigga. Like, and that, that's what it is, bro. It's because they'll align themselves with certain small aspects, right? The aspects that will get a bag attached to it, but they won't. Got, I can already tell you right now, they got niggas wearing uniforms at that motherfucker. We already know what, come on, some respectability politics shit. You already know, like, the thing is, like, bro, let's just call a spade a spade. Let's call things what they are, my nigga. Like, we got to call things what they are. We got to look at things for what they are. 
That's all you have to do. Stop pushing your agenda onto shit and start looking at it for what it is. Yeah. People got to stop projecting their politics onto these niggas. You know, and back in the day, you nigga, it's like you had the Panthers pulling up on niggas, bro. <laughs> you feel me? Like, nah, nigga, this is what it is. You feel me? Like, what was uh John Brown? James Brown. James nigga? Brown. Said John <laughs> <laughs> His job, bro. That white nigga from the Mormons. <laughs> I don't fucking know <laughs> James Brown nigga Oh you hella disrespectful <laughs> <laughs> I said John bro Oh my god um, That was wild James Brown Just had an out of body experience <laughs> Just call this nigga <laughs> Go ahead and Continue to tell your story Bro yo. who is John Brown Somebody suck in my head It's that nigga from the Mormon From the Mormons bro. For real Yeah That's disrespectful I'm sorry James Brown yeah, just Keep going <laughs> When <dude>. the <laughs> When the Panthers pulled up on the James Brown Was like nigga you gonna perform bro you know the story better yeah, than I do. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. Nigga was performing at a, at a spot in Oakland um, for like a festival that the Panthers were throwing. And, you know, like all musicians, I'm like, I'm not, all right, I'm here. I'm not performing till I, till I get paid, though. And, you know, Huey had to rock up on that nigga. Like, nigga, you going to get on this stage, nigga. <laughs> and he got his ass on stage <laughs> before, but I'll be in pay yet. Yeah. Uh, but I think that's, that's what has to happen, bro. It's like, bro, we can't continue to allow these people. To use our community when they want to, or to pick and choose when they're a part of the community, but live up and yes. you feel me, yes, not be in the community. You know what I'm saying? It's like okay, yeah, I'm black. It's like the whole fucking. I watched one episode of that fucking what show? Black as fuck. It's like just black capitalist bourgeoisie worrying about the most random ass problems and making up problems for themselves. Oh my god, I got stared at wrong. Like nigga, shut up. <laughs> my my thing. <laughs> fuck, I had a point that I was gonna make. You were saying. Oh yeah, so yeah, I think it's important that we, we that we raise the bar, that we challenge folks, that we call people out in the ways that they're being lackadaisical with their politics and their efforts, and then also y'all need to realize, like, bro, I'm someone that's constantly being called in and, and trying to develop and trying to develop my politic and do better and and completely live by the things that I that I speak on here and that I try to t- educate y'all on, and like niggas who actually want to do better and do right have no problem with being called in. Have no problem with being called out, my nigga. And I know it's a tough pill to swallow, but you got to realize that, bro, some folks want this blackness shit for as far as it can take them. It's not about liberation. And we've seen it. <laughs> like, And if we were taking the lessons from 2014 and all that has happened from 2014 to 2020 within activism, we have seen niggas come to protest, put up their little fists. You feel me? Niggas write articles about, you know, black people dying. And then going and chasing book deals and going and chasing bags and speaking bags and taking, you know, speaking at events sponsored by Wells Fargo. You feel me? Like, we've seen niggas do this, right? So, it's like, we can't let that shit happen no more. Period, bro. These niggas have to be disowned. These niggas have to be called out. And if they don't want to change the behavior that they're doing, we have to treat them like an enemy of our community because that's what they are. Period. That's facts, bro. And it's just... I feel like, and especially with like, you know, when, when you talk about the heralded Beyonce, Jay Z, and LeBrons of the world, it's like you can't cri- can't critique these. I mean, shit. folks are so. You saw what happened to my Twitter account when I said Beyonce's name. What happened? Ah, oh, bro, I had. Oh, you talking about just trolls? Yeah, yeah just yeah, trolls, bro. It's like, Anytime, yeah. <laughs> you can't talk about Queen B without you feel me, without fucking. Like some someone in the fucking beehive nigga she was like, "We love being exploited. Let her exploit us. Shut up and listen to her new song." I'm like, "Bro, what?" It's just like, this is for, and then like I don't. I only expect I only expect people to take this conversation serious if they actually are serious about you know liberation and protecting themselves from the violence. Because if you really are upset about you know um, Sean Reed and Amal Arbery, you should you should know that like the same system that props. LeBron and the Jay Z's and Beyonces of the world up and makes them the, the thought leaders of, of the black of, community. Of black community is the same system that is shooting <sighs> black men in cold blood in broad daylight. Like it's the same. You got to they they connect, my nigga. It's the same capitalist. And they system. only have you feel me. They only have the ability to do what they do because of this capitalist system, bro. It's like this capitalist system will choose a select few quote unquote good Negroes 
to be propped up and to be used against the masses of black people and to be used as an example like oh be like this person pick yourself up by the bootstrap yep. you know uh we the new black you feel me get over your skin pigmentation you feel me just keep you know working hard and pull yourself up by your tims nigga it's like bruh that's what these niggas has been put in this place for they'll let a few you know black people get rich and then they'll use those people as literally like chess moves bro it's like obama was the greatest chess move for white supremacy because it says oh we is past this race shit we got a black president and then this black president don't give a fuck about black people you feel me don't give a fuck about brown people it's deporting more people than donald trump Think but let's go back to Obama, nigga. Fuck Obama, nigga. And fuck Trump and fuck any president of this country, bro. And fuck all these motherfuckers who align themselves with it. Because the Obamas, the Carters, the Oprahs, the Diddies, they all in one and the same and they're just used in different ways, bro. Bro, people, people <laughs> who really love and care for you ain't going to just talk in your best interest. They're going to act in your best interest. And that's what folks got to remember, bro. It's not just like people who really care for you, who really love you, are going to act in your best interest. They're not just going to talk in your best interest. And that's what we got to stop allowing these motherfuckers to do is just talk a good game. Period. It's like, what are you doing, dog? Come on. Y'all obviously see that this shit is time Time is of the essence. Y'all obviously see the, the um, what is it? Fuck. Uh, damn, I'm drawing a blank. But y'all, like, this shit is like, it's urgent, bro. Y'all see, see the urgency behind it. Motherfuckers is dying, bro. Y'all see Every day, it. bro, from different... From different weapons. <laughs> you know what I mean? Whether it's the healthcare system, this education system, you feel me? What do you call the police? Some, like, bro, somebody has the, the, the means and the resources to change your, to change your everyday life, to, to free you from the shackles of white supremacy and just is choosing not to. And I don't want to do something like I don't like. And this is the thing. We not placing all the burden on these niggas because it's groups out here that are doing all the work with with. A fucking the limited with amount of resources. One percent of the resources that these folks that we just named. <laughs> Not even one percent. It's point zero zero one. Nobody's <laughs> saying LeBron is supposed to be fucking. What's that nigga name? Um, Nat Turner. <laughs> you feel me? Like nobody saying LeBron got to be Nat Turner, nigga. He ain't got to fucking go out here and do it all himself. It would be great if he if he tried to you know really use his voice because he used it any other time. Why is it? But that's all yeah Actually niggas are calling And demanding of these niggas But the real reality is Like they not gonna have to do This shit by themselves It's, it's black folks everywhere bro It's Africans across the diaspora That have been working to free us bro Yeah And my thing is I'm becoming Almost less and less invested In these niggas anyways Because The true power will always reside Within the people bro So we gotta call these niggas out And expose them to contradictions But Niggas been doing this for years bro There ain't no changing With these niggas bro until you feel me, we force this shit to change. That's and that's you a good point. Me? Yeah, I'm hoping what people take away from this conversation is not only like call be able to spot an op when you see one and start holding motherfuckers to a higher standard, but also like, bro, once you recognize that they op, stop putting all your time and into and, and and passion into them people and come put it into the people that's doing the work. Put that shit into yourself, damn near. Yeah. Like, what? And it really is, you know, we have to look at this idea of celebrity culture, bro. Like stand culture, bro. Like shit gotta go. That shit has to, to go. And this is a product of capitalism, bro. It's a product of maintaining capitalism. It's a product of maintaining white supremacy, celebrity culture, because they are propped up as leaders in our community without ever doing any form of leadership, nigga. You feel me? It's like <laughs> when their dad is a CEO of a company, and then then the 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 child gets an automatic, you know, <laughs> executive position, bro. Just like how Trump is a fucking, you know, president and brought his fucking son in, nigga. It's like, this is what this whole celebrity culture shit is like, bro. Yeah. Like, that's what it is. And this celebrity culture got to go, bro. We got to stop standing, niggas, bro. It's yeah, like, stop you can being, enjoy. Stop being, so, listen, stop being yeah. so quick to give niggas your loyalty and respect. Stop, stop being used, period, bro. Because they don't give a fuck about niggas you, nigga. Niggas ain't more than a check, a stream, a view. That's all it is. You nothing but a number. And we got to. Keep that celebrity culture, bro. We gotta check that shit and move it away because that culture is being used against our people. You feel me? It's being used and weaponized against our people to curb radicalism, <laughs> to curb revolution. That's what it really is. So you have a Diddy go up, you have Obama go up, you have LeBron 
but it's like there's no action plan with any of that shit. Stop following niggas who ain't reading on top of that. These niggas ain't doing no reading. They don't even know fucking history. <laughs> like these niggas ain't come on, man. <laughs> Demand more of these niggas. Period. Come on. The black vote ain't free. Didn't you have to work up. for our black vote. African. I'm an African nigga. You exploit Africans yourself, nigga. You talking about the same nigga that bought Mace's masters for twenty thousand dollars, and I'm sure them shits is well, worth uh, worth well over ten million. So you expecting a nigga who has had a track record track record of exploiting of his exploiting own, his, his own, people. own people, Africans, nigga, since he wants to claim African as an identity? Ain't no better than the white man, bro. Ain't no fucking. Better. See a op, spot a op. I was almost about to say something else after that. I know. I know what you <laughs> want to say. <laughs> hey, y'all. I just want to demand more. Demand more from these celebs. Um, that, That's what I really want. You know who who else had me like... This one had me more so laughing than, than mad. Yeah. But Gabrielle Union was doing... And I, I love Gabrielle Union. We talked about her with, with... I don't know who was on the pod... We also probably talked about them on discourse. I think. Yeah, but just like you know, the intentional parenting aspect that her and, and Dwayne Wade have shown for Zaya, I think it's Zaya. Well, for, for their daughter, for their, for daughter. their trans daughter. Yeah. Um. So I fuck with Gabrielle Union. So I saw him just like I don't know if it's I don't know what 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 she was thinking when she said this, but she was like, <laughs> you know, she started in, in reference. I, I think that's the thing is there wasn't much thought. <laughs> It was just talk, bro. It wasn't based in, you feel me? That's the thing why we're saying, nigga, is like base your shit in some type of theory or some type of, you know, analysis, you feel me? Or some type of shit like that. That's that's all it has to be. It was, it was, it was there was definitely some cognitive dissonance that was showing in, in, in her interview. For most, certainly black entertainers, black celebrities, um, we don't really... For all of the, the Oprahs and the, the people who have just a a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of money. Um, most of us are one or two checks away from not having money to pay for all of our things. You know what I mean? Um, so this stoppage of work and money it is impacting marginalized celebrities the most. But essentially she was saying like, you know, as a pandemic, like many of us fucking have like lost our jobs or like, or, you know, have lost aspects of our income and she was like yeah you know the black the marginalized um you know black entertainers and black and entertainers, actors and actresses which you know they they are in in you know they are but i think you know you got to be careful with how you use that word because like marginalization has a certain violence that's attached to it you know what i'm saying you can't just be saying like i get i get what she's saying because you know black you're actors, experiencing and i mean black actors yeah. are more you know we know this they are kept out of Hollywood. We we know that for a fact, right? Um, but yeah, you it's not you can't be using that word that loosely. You can't. Yeah, I mean, especially when you are somebody, you know, who has a net worth of over, you know, forty million dollars and uh Dwayne Wade has a net worth of over a hundred, twenty, hundred, forty million dollars, right? So when you say that it's just like, bro, what we're worried about? We can't buy our things. What are things? She literally said we're a few checks away from not being able to afford our things. Not be like when we be talking. We've been talking said about a few checks away, nigga. We be talking about being on the streets. But niggas be like, I'm not gonna be able to afford rent. I'm not gonna be able to eat. I don't have health care, right? She's saying we like. She just said things like, my nigga, come on, come on, man. And like, and I would understand if like you talking specifically about like young black actors and actresses. You feel me? Who might have one role. And who aren't making, you know, I think the average is like sixty thousand dollars or something she like that. She's been in the game, but bro, it's like, for bro, you 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 making millions Over and millions of dollars. Years. So it's like you could have used years. it like to be like, okay, yeah, like. Have you seen videos from their house, nigga? They are by, by yeah. far living in excess. Oh like, yeah, you, like facts. Living in excess is not the same thing as not having your material needs met. If you're saying that you a few checks away from not being able to afford your things, not be able to afford the frivolous things that you have, is not the same thing as folks. But you, you, the millions that are applying for unemployment. If you have two hundred million dollars, bro, you you can afford the things. <laughs> or maybe you can't, nigga, because you have that many things. Maybe they actually do have that many things. But again, my point is oh, like two hundred million dollars, bro. Bro, a, a, <laughs> a rich a rich person, you know, fending for the sympathy or empathy at that point, because they're hella black folks who can actually empathize with not being able to, you know, afford rent, food, clothes, etc. Right? Um, like fishing for that empathy is like, come on, sis, you got to do better. Like, 
Yeah. I'm not feeling sorry for anyone that, again, is living in ex- excess. Like, you have hella rooms in your house. You yeah. have a big-ass dining room. You definitely have more space than you actually need, right? Like, everything you have at this point is a want. Um, and that's just like... You have more wealth than you need. Like It could have been a dope time for her to be like, yeah, a lot of black people in the industry will be affected, like the janitors who was working in the studio execs. You feel me? Who were working in the studio exec offices or cleaning, you feel me, the studio sets and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Or the, the workers who actually lost their jobs and lost all of their income. You know what I mean? And pointing out those disparities. But when you make it about the niggas who was making a lot of money... And about things, nigga, when we talking about literally survival for some people, bro, it's just it's out of pocket. <laughs> Y'all got to realize, like, bro, you have a lot more than what you need. 30 like, million people just lost their fucking jobs, nigga. So, so many of us are having such a different experience than her in this pandemic, than the wage in this pandemic, my nigga. Come on. Come on. And that's again the the cognitive dissonance that celebrities hold. Yeah, and, and they just don't want to learn, bro. It's like tap in with niggas, bro. It's it's we in the age of information, nigga. We in the age of connectivity, nigga. It's not that hard to tap in with niggas doing grassroots work, bro. I think it's I think it was trying for me. I also think it was like trying to be on some relatable shit. But it's like sis, we can't relate. We're not the same. Our situations are not the same. We cannot relate. I'm sorry to break it to you. We we cannot. We're not the same. This is not the same position. You might you might not be able to afford one of your Ferraris or some shit or your eight bedroom house or whatever the fuck you got going on. Or your fourth house that you have and like oh we're gonna lose the vacation house. The we fuck? can't go to Sweden and <laughs> like ski in the Alps. <laughs> this is this like it's it's wild how attached how attached poor folks or how in the now poor folks are with the wealthy, but just how out of touch the wealthy are with poor folks. The wealthy don't give a fuck about poor folks. So it's not even a mutual relationship. It's not reciprocal at all. We, we, a lot of folks spend so Niggas much time. defend bro, celebrities th- day in and day out, nigga. Like, engulfing themselves in their lives, bro. Knowing so somebody much Somebody was just like, bro, lives. I'm mad and I'm poor because I'm critiquing these niggas. I'm like, what? You're just mad because you poor, nigga. What? Yes, I am. Okay. For <laughs> sure. Yeah, that's actually why. Because niggas is being exploited. And I'm sure you're poor too, nigga. I'm like, bro, screenshot your bank account, nigga. Acting like you rich, nigga. <laughs> That's the worst shit. Niggas acting like they fucking rich. That false class solidarity. Bruh. Like, nigga, I might even have more money than you. What that nigga Q said? <laughs> you got a better chance to be struck by lightning than meeting a billionaire. He didn't say they're becoming a billionaire. This nigga said they're meeting a billionaire. Got a better chance of being struck by lightning, my nigga. And that's again, we shouldn't even Cold be. world. We shouldn't even. A part of this, a part of the number that capitalism has done is our, on our psyche is. The folks aspiring to be rich. You should not want to be rich. And that's that pure capitalist propaganda and that these celebrities are used to promote this capitalist propaganda. It's because people like they align being rich with being free. And it's like, nah, my nigga, for one, that's not even the truth. True freedom is gonna be the liberation and the destruction of all these oppressive systems. Being rich ain't even gonna be a concept. (laughs) Being rich not even gonna be a concept. But that's what so many niggas. Like. That's that's why so many. That niggas, was a bar. <laughs> hey, that's why I like we we seen it, bro. That's why so many niggas aspire to be rich. They believe once they rich, they are gonna have that sense of self worth. They are gonna have that sense of a meaning. They are gonna be. Able if to, you ain't developing you know, any of that self worth before you have money, like what makes you think you're gonna have self worth because you got a fucking bunch of dead slave masters in your pocket? Self worth don't come from money, bro. Period. Cause some of these titles here, just do some of this reading. <laughs> you know, some of them. Do some of this reading. Learn something, y'all. You're going to learn something today. If you do some of this reading right here, just a few of these. Just <laughs> you'll, you'll, you'll definitely learn something. The lowest, you know, just come on. Just a little bit of this, y'all. It's all I take. You know, shout out my nigga George. Y'all get, y'all get their book right here. <laughs> Or do some listening, man. It's like if you don't want to read and don't got the time to read, nigga. Hevelblackpod dot com with that lyrical that was, heat, nigga. That's pretty ableist. Everybody can't read, but you do consume your political education in the ways that you can. And we on YouTube nigga. now. You feel me Come with on. that heat, bro? For the F, but you should pay, nigga. Five dollars a month, Patreon dot com slash Hevelblackpod. I think it's a good time to transition to our extended episode. So tap in with our Patreon, patreon.com slash hellblackpod for exclusive content. You feel me? Support black radical creators, nigga. Support black socialists, nigga. If you want this political education, bro, we need the support. So tap in with us thousand percent, bro. We need 
we need your <laughs> we need your help and we need your support, bro, because we seen this ignorance being spewed out over time, nigga. Especially in a pandemic, nigga. This propaganda is over time, bro. So fuck with radicals, nigga. Fuck with black people, nigga. Period. Hella Black episode seventy three. You know, on this we I don't know. Start over. I feel like Webby. This one we talk. I can't do this, bro. I'm stressed out. <laughs> I'm so mad. Uh, and political education. Fuck, let me run that shit back. Just record. That was trash. <laughs> I'm just, over this shit, too. Hella black. That was it, though, bro. Nah, I started stumbling at the end. <laughs> Femininity. You gotta chill. All right, let me go, let me go, let me go. And we also talk about the importance. Hella black. <laughs> Boom. <laughs>